I think of YC as like culturally aligned in that we believe in founders and we believe in incentives and we believe in being the first phone call. That's about where the comparison probably ends. And like Especially today. Like maybe yeah. we can draw parallels back to the way the industry could used have, to work. Used to work and what it could have been if YC existed back then. Yeah. And so so is the vision now, so so how big is the fund? 270. 270, and you're gonna do how many deals out of that? 35, 40. 35, 40 deals. Uh, and so that's gonna be over three years? Yeah, a year? like two and a half years, three years. How many have you done so far? Four. And do you do you plan to keep, like what, what is the profile of these people when they come to you? Do they stay on as CEOs? Do you help them recruit CEOs? What is that, is that gonna be an evolution over time? That do, do you want them to stay in the seat? How does that work? We try not to have a strong opinion about there's one way to do this. I think our view on this is each company is a little different. The context is different, the risks are different. And so we will work with the founders to figure out the best plan for your business to maximize the value of your equity. Is there an idealistic sentiment like there is in Silicon Valley and tech and software about like being the founder CEO or is it less so in bio? It's almost swung the other way a little bit where I think the perception is the founders, the scientific founders can't be the CEOs and there's actually some good reasons why being a biotech CEO is significantly harder to learn fast or quickly than being a tech CEO. What are some of those? There's just so many more operational problems you have to work on in bio. Like the width of the problem space you have to work on is a lot broader and the talent pool is smaller. And so it's just harder to like get the best people in all the places. Because in tech, like how many great sales leaders are there? Five, five. There's yeah. so many people you can go and recruit because the, the, the market's so big. Here, the, the talent pools are tighter, the expertise, you have to be in the industry for a lot longer to be good at this. So it's just, I think of it as like your path is a little harder to knock out. Um, there's also like the history, you know, of look, what makes you a great scientist doesn't necessarily make you a great CEO. Sure. Um, it's not like being a software engineer where you go to school for four years and really two years at this point because these kids are so good. You know, to be good at drug discovery, you're doing this for like 20 years before you can really, you know, be an expert. Um, I think our thesis is, Let's see what makes sense for this company. I think we're going to have a distribution. Some founders can do it and want to do it. Some founders can do it, but they need guidance and you bring in a CEO and maybe they ride shotgun. Some founders don't want to do it at all and you bring in a CEO early. Uh, it just depends. My take on it is we have this weird habit in biotech of trying to build the team before we have any data, which I never understood because like, why would the best people join the company before it has any data. So the way they attract the best talent is they shove a bunch of money in. And take a bunch of dilution. All the dilution, right? Like you're basically like, all right, this is, you know, we're gonna put $80 million into this thing right up front. And like the founders aren't really in control anymore and they own like a really tiny piece, but that 80 million is gonna attract talent. And that works for the fund, but it doesn't really work great for the founding team. So our theory is, well, what if we didn't put $80 million in right away? Like, what if we put eight? And then we made real progress for that eight in the seed. That's what our team does, right? We, we help you make the right progress. And then we go and raise more money at a higher price for less dilution. And by the way, there's this like secondary benefit where the people who you do need to recruit at a certain point, because our team can't take you all the way through, now they're interested because now you have data. It's like showing up and saying, I have this idea versus showing up and saying, I have this idea. I've done these experiments. Here's what the data shows. Like, I have customer feedback that validates the product. The dogs will eat the dog food. Versus... Yeah, exactly. Like you're going to get better people and you're going to get better people because you have more to show and it's less risky. And plus you also have a bigger cap table in terms of founder ownership. So you can give bigger equity grants. It's just like structurally a better business that way. The reason it hasn't happened is not because, you know, people haven't thought of this. It's just really hard. It's really hard to make progress at the seed because the experts don't pay attention to you, the vendors don't pay attention to you, designing the, the plans are hard, knowing you know, stuff that's happened in pharma that hasn't been written down is hard. It's just information is missing. That's what we do. Our, we kind of like bridge that gap. You know, it, it's really, in a funny way, it's like similar to many of the things I learned of, there's a set of expertise that's sitting out there that's better than you know, always. Getting it is really hard. It takes a lot of time and effort. Well, we just like sit in the middle between the founder and that expertise. Sometimes it's technical expertise. Sometimes it's just knowing the history. 
and we can cut that time to learning, that time to the right answer down by 95%. Um, and that's actually how it's playing out. I mean, we, we knew this would be the, we believe this would be true. It's playing out that it's true uh, at small scale. And so now it's just a question of, is Curie viewed as a high quality option for founders? Because if it is, if all of a sudden you're sitting in, maybe you're in biotech or you're in academia and you've got an idea, and right now you're like, well, what the fuck am I gonna do with this idea? Like, where do I go? And like, all those options aren't particularly great. Our hope is we look like a new option. And you go, well, I'm not 100% sure if this is a company yet, but let me go call Curie. We look at the idea, we're like, oh, this is really interesting, or not. Uh, let us help shape and mold this with you and then get it set up in a world where you actually can make the leap. And I think if we do that, our thesis is net new founders. That's this whole like pithy free the so founders that, that's thing. What, that's what I was going to ask is how much of the, how much do you think is cannibalizing or stealing from people that otherwise would be founders versus unlocking the founder that wouldn't have been because it's it's incrementally easier to get going or validate the ideas. Like the 45 and I realize it's going to be yeah. a swag and it's a spectrum and who knows where the tipping point is for them right, to actually yeah. do it. But like, I mean, is it, if a 45 is at 10 and 35, 10 would have been otherwise and 35 would, wouldn't have been, or is it 35, 10, or is it, I, I know there's an idealistic state and I'm sure it'll change over time. I don't think we know. I think all we know is that, yes, like it's both. There it's, will be some. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whoever it is at the margin, it will yeah. be easier for them to get going. I think we'll see things like, you know, the postdoc who would have tried to start it like through the lab director in this model where the postdoc is an employee is now like, wait a minute, why don't I just try and do this myself? I think you'll see people who would have been brought in as one of those early employees decide, wait a minute, why don't I go hunt the idea down myself so I can own you know 10x the equity? So I think we'll see that kind of stuff. Um, in addition to like this company is just normally getting formed and this is a better option for them. Um, I think we'll just see like more organic market making activities essentially, or the market will solve it over time. Um, yeah. And there's some ideas that wouldn't have gotten off the ground because there's like a set of annoying work you have to do in the beginning and nobody wanted to do it, or we didn't have the bandwidth to do it as an industry or whatever. The firm that would have done it had a bad day, but here we are. So I think it's all of those things. Um, it's just going to take a little bit of time for people to realize that we are an option and a good one. So, you know, that's on us. Like we have to make everybody aware. We have to build, continue to build our team. We're 20, 25 people will be 60 soon. Uh, and then we actually have to do the work. We have to like, you know, everything I just said is the, is the story. And we've been doing it now. We have these four companies and we're, we're, we're in diligence for probably another 10. Um, we just have to do the work. And you're constraining the terms, right? So, so remind me, it, it's, it's, it, it's roughly five to seven uh, for about 33% of the, of the equity. And then we take additional risk by providing all the services end to end, all the way through to the A, right? This isn't like advice. This is like, we're in, we're like literally designing the plan with you. You can think of it almost like a co-founder. Yeah. Uh, we take seven and a half percent founder common for this. So we take no cash, Right? We don't like hand you money and then charge it back, which is what some of the other funds do. We hand you a bunch of money. We say, we want 95% of that money to go to the experiments. Like if you look at the budgets of these companies, almost all of the money goes to the experiments because you don't, there's people you don't have to hire now. We do it for you, right? There's legal work you don't have to do. We've already done it ahead of time. You don't have to do contracting. You don't have to do NDA. Like we did all this infrastructure for you, just focused on the science. Uh, we provide all of that help cashless. We take 7.5% equity for it, meaning... And the way I frame this to founders is like, we are the single most aligned seed investor you could ever possibly have. We only make money if you have a wild success. And by the way, we've burned cash to do this work for you, right? So we're extra incentivized for you to have a good outcome because we're actually like out additional money beyond the investment. Um, so founders will own somewhere around 60-ish percent, depending on the split among their own team. We'll own about 40 heading into the A. And then if we do our job, you're taking less dilution at the A, you're taking less dilution at the B on a much higher quality idea with a higher chance of success, right? It's not just about dilution at seed. I think people get very confused about like, yeah, but what if I could get better seed terms? Like, cool, enjoy getting crushed at the A and sure. you didn't make real progress. Imagine, you know, your ter series A term sheet. This is like not atypical in biotech is 60 on five, 80 on 10. Those are real rounds. Those happen all the time. $80 million on, on 10, 10 pre. 100%. Yeah. 
Hundred percent. Now, are those the common? No. But yes, they happen because you have these companies that need a lot of money because they didn't they didn't prove that you know the idea could work at a level of rigor they could have done had they like really focused. The VC fund is saying this is really interesting. But like, there's so much risk in this business, I need to overcapitalize it so that we can continue to make some mistakes because you don't want to run out of cash and have to fundraise again. Here's a shit ton of money, but like, we're going to take over this thing. You can go the other direction, right? You can, do, you can do the seed thing on your own, but like, what happens after you've blown your seed money and you haven't made real progress? I'm sure you'll have some great, I, I would imagine it's illustrative right now, but I'm sure you have some great, if you work with us, then here's what an A can look like. Here's yeah, what and it can look like. I mean, the best feeling is going to be when we just show. Show the data. Our series know. A's have a success rate of, you know, 90% or whatever it is. And then uh, in dilution terms of X, Y, Z versus. Totally. Yeah. And, and, and look, it's hard too, because this is an industry that doesn't know venture math super well. So we have education we need to do. Um, but the point that I try to convey to founders when I get on a phone with them, if, if they need it, is you have to think of ownership over the trajectory of the company. The end state of it. Yes, because we don't do uh, secondary cash outs in biotech <laughs> yeah, yeah. like we do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, ex right, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Now they're gone. Yeah, now yeah. they're gone. There's no more Series B where the 80% of the money goes into the, the, the penthouse apartment. Uh, but so that doesn't happen. So you have to think about it at the end result, which means you have to think about like the trajectory of the business, which means you have to think of the progress at the seed leading to the A, leading to the B. Uh, the better you do in the seed, the better you do in the A, the better you do in the B. You actually will own more of your own thing. That's not always, A, not like people don't always understand that that's true, uh, even when I explain it. Um, it's not intuitive to a lot of folks. It's just hard, right? It's like, you know, you have to have, you have to have tried it and failed. Sure. It's actually been really interesting. A lot of the found, a lot of the people we've talked to that get the most excited about this are the first time founders. It's like someone who's like, oh, for my next company, I'm definitely doing this. Oh, you mean the existing people that you can't back that Yeah, because they're already, they're already got there to like, this was so fucking hard. Yeah, yeah. And I, I had no idea. The uh, repeat people are coming back because they've walked, you know, walked through the woods right. on their own and they're like, hey, I don't want to do that They've again. been like, oh yeah, you're right. I did send 75 emails to experts and three responded, you know, or whatever the problem ended up being. Uh, or like, I didn't fully appreciate, I had to get the strategy right at the, you know, Whatever. The best part of venture in that is ultimately the, if you build that brand, then it, it could be true that you actually create that value. Or it could be true that the perception that you create that value then allows people more willing to pay that price later on, right? Which is one of the things I always wonder about, like the eight plus early stage venture investors. Like, do they have a higher success rate because of the help and guidance that they have, or because people like following them and building relationships with them and the work that- You, you know, in biotech- You have real service that you're adding, so I'm sure it's more evidential than- It's more objective in biotech too, I would say, because at the end of the day, the drug has to work. Yeah. And so you can you can run the hype train, you know, all right, let me follow like the best seed and stop like pop in the middle and then sell it to the next guy. But what happens actually is these companies and the data gets more mature is like, you see the data. Yeah. And so, you know, we can run on our reputation only only for so long, but eventually it's like, oh yeah, no, it didn't, it, just, it doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of true in venture as well. Like ultimately what the valuation of the business is at its end stage I, is. I think biotech is a little bit more binary. I know it's a lot more binary. Definitely more binary. Because in, in, in tech also, you, you can see these companies where like the revenue is growing and it looks all good, but like actually when you look under the hood, it's like, okay, the margin's negative, or like it's really marketing dollars that are driving it. But you can kind of convince yourself that there's something here. It's like, oh yeah, no, we ran this talk study and, and like the talks is too much. We got to shut it down. There's a binary scorecard. It's more binary. It's not always binary, but it's more binary. And so I think it's harder to just reputationally win the next round. Like you, you do have to make real progress. And I think biotech investors, rightfully so, especially the ones that write the bigger checks are like very strong skeptics about everything. The assumption is it doesn't work, yeah. All right, and so prove to me that it could. Whereas I think in software, you, you kind of get a little bit more rose-colored glasses.